Dylan appears on screen in front of a bookshelf wearing an Access is Love t-shirt. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you could join us. Tonight, we're going to talk about voter mobilization, disability rights, and how we will have an impact on the November election. Before we dive into the technology we've built, I wanna mention a few things. You'll notice that we have a number of accessibility features for this Zoom event to ensure that everyone is able to enjoy tonight's program. This includes American Sign Language, open captions, and audio descriptions. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with these accommodations, I'm glad that tonight's program will introduce them to you. And for those that rely on accessibility, please email us if there's anything we can do to improve for future events. For an overview, tonight is designed as a preview or a first look at our comprehensive Get Out the Vote app and an outline for how we're going to make a huge impact this election. In September, we'll invite you to join us again to celebrate the app's official launch, share with you some additional news and special guests. But now to begin, I'd like to turn things over to Tony Coelho, an important mentor of mine and a champion for the disability rights movement. Once Tony is finished, I'll return and introduce you to our incredible team, tell you about our amazing partners, and take you through our outreach strategy. And then we'll pull back the curtain and give you a first look at the Brink Voter Guide's key features and how we make it all accessible. Then to wrap up, you'll hear from Stephanie Berger, who's spearheading this fundraising campaign and has an important final message. So without further ado, please help me welcome Tony Coelho. Tony? Tony enters the screen in front of the digital background of the Golden Gate Bridge. Hello, everyone. I'm Tony Coelho, and I'm pleased to join you all tonight. I am a former member of Congress, and I was the lead author of the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, which just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Before the passing of the ADA, if you had a wheelchair, you could be dismissed from a movie theater because they considered you a fire hazard. If you were sight impaired, you could be dismissed from a restaurant for asking what was on the menu. If you had a disability 30 years ago and a potential employer asked you if you had a disability or he or she saw that you had a disability, they could say outright to you, they were not gonna hire you because of your disability. And you know what? All that was legal 30 years ago. Thanks to the ADA, that has changed, but there is still significant work to be done, as I'm sure all of you know. And we must be determined to keep fighting for greater access and accessibility. The disability community is 25% of the American population. Now, if you include just one loved one or a caregiver, we are over 50% of the population. What does that mean? That means we need to vote, to vote in mass as a community, to continue to protect our rights and create a more perfect union here in the United States and a more equitable society around the world. Accessibility is a foundational principle of the disability rights movement. We must work to ensure that every American has access to the same information and opportunity that others have. That's why I am so excited about the launch of Brink. I met Dylan almost five years ago now while working on the 2016 Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. We had set up a disability policy team and Dylan was part of it. We worked together for over 15 months developing an incredible policy booklet for that campaign. In fact, that is where the idea for this get out the vote effort was born and I'm happy to watch Dylan develop it over the years into the exciting opportunity we will all hear about tonight. With that, I turn it back over to Dylan. Thank you all and hope you join me in supporting this fantastic voter mobilization effort. Dylan returns to the screen. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tony. This focus on accessibility has really been the driving force for our voter mobilization work. I know personally from my time in school, when I didn't have the proper accommodations, I wasn't able to succeed. Yet, I've been lucky to grow up as part of the ADA generation, 
meaning that I grew up with the legal protections Tony just described. But sadly, there's so much farther we need to go to make all of society accessible to the disability community. And unfortunately, our electoral process is full of issues. Did you know as recently as 2018, the New York State DMV voter registration site wasn't compatible with screen readers? It's true, the ACLU even produced a great video to raise awareness. And if you'd like to see how frustrating it is to deal with an inaccessible website, you can find that link within the reference section at the end of this presentation. In 2019, the Democrat, during the Democratic presidential primary, not one of the candidates' websites was fully accessible. And just recently, there is a major lawsuit against the White House for not having American Sign Language present at COVID-19 briefings. Civic participation and voter engagement are essential for our democracy. And it's important that every member of society has equal access to the information and processes in order to participate. And that's why we built the Brank Voter Guide, because our mission is to make democracy more accessible to create a hub for all of the information a voter needs to know in an accessible format designed as a get out the vote tool. Now, you may be wondering what real impact an accessible app can make, but according to a Rutgers University study of disability voter turnout in the 2016 election, if the disability community had voted at the same rate as the general public, there would have been an additional 2.2 million more votes cast. That is a staggering number, which is particularly unfortunate given how low our overall turnout rate is. We have a lot of ground to make up. Our goal is that Brink will help increase voter turnout both in the disability community and for all Americans. Just by simplifying the process, providing quick reminders and direct access to all of the necessary resources in a truly accessible way. Now, before I unveil the product, I'd like to take a moment to highlight our team and the invaluable advisors that helped get us here and will continue to drive this vision into the future. Our team has worked with disability organizations, raised money for disability causes, and launched products for the disability community. But most importantly, each of us has a disability or has a family member with a disability and is personally connected to this issue. Here we have photos of Mick and Colleen who have been incredibly helpful in developing our overall strategy and approach from the start. Now we have photos of Stephen and Valerie, the driving force behind our technology development. We are also fortunate to partner with the World Institute of Disability as our nonprofit fiscal sponsor. In fact, a number of their staff have important roles on our growing team. Here is a photo of Jessica who leads our partnership outreach a photo of Moya, who leads our social media strategy, and Patrick, our volunteer coordinator. These roles are particularly important because our partnership goal from the very beginning is to be as inclusive and collaborative as possible. There are many individuals and organizations focused on voter mobilization, and we wanna work alongside everyone. We've made the investment of both time and money to develop this product that can fold into the great organizing work being done by so many different groups. Next, I'd like to introduce you to our board of advisors, all of whom have played an important role in Brink's development. Here we have a photo of Tony Coelho, who we just heard from. Now a photo of Jannie Lehrer Stein, appointed by President Obama to the National Council on Disability and a photo of Janet Lebrecht, also appointed by President Obama as a commissioner in the Department of Education. Aside from our advisors, we've also garnered support from key politicians from both sides of the aisle, including Democrat Senator Tammy Duckworth and Republican former Governor Dennis Dugard, both of whom love Brink's mission. But most importantly, we have the support among the leading disability organizations across the country as our strategic partners. These partners participate in our beta testing earlier this year and their feedback has influenced our tech development and they will now help us distribute the app to their members all across the country. Many of these partners are on the call today and I wanna welcome everyone and we couldn't do this without you. On screen now, we have logos from some of these partners, uh, the American Council for the Blind, the Association of University Centers on Disability, 
the National Down Syndrome Society. And the screen just isn't big enough to show you all the partners, but believe me, we love you guys and it's an honor to work with everyone. While most of these groups have some form of their own voter engagement plans, the Brink Voter Guide both complements and amplifies these efforts. We're proud to be able to provide our free and accessible tool that can be distributed as part of any organizing work being done. So how did we get here? We tested our first product across five states in the 2018 midterms. Since then, we have interviewed people with different disabilities from across the country, collected thousands of surveys, had countless conversations at protests, at conferences, with DC politicians and city leaders from around the country to truly understand what frustrates people about the voting process and what deters others from participating altogether. In this photo, you can see members of our team mapping out the different aspects of the voter journey using post-its and whiteboards. That work informed not only how we're approaching our 2020 strategy, but also the new product you're gonna to see tonight. Now, what we've all been waiting for, the app itself. I'll begin by showcasing key sections of the app with screenshots. So to start, we ask for the user's address. And with that, the, app, the application builds a custom experience with all of the federal, state, and local information applicable to them, including letting the user decide how they want to cast their ballot, whether that be vote by mail, early voting, or election day voting, all depending on what options are available to them along with providing directions to the user's polling location. Now, nearly every voting tool out there does some version of this, and there are many organizations that focus primarily on voter registration, but that's all. This, however, is where the Brink Voter Guide is just getting started. We next take the user to their checklist, which details the complete process a voter takes to cast their ballot. We designed this feature for first time voters and those unfamiliar with the process in the most straightforward and linear way. This is an accessibility consideration as well, taking a complex process and simplifying it down to its core elements, step by step. This section is also very useful for experienced voters as well, but by providing deadline warnings so that you never miss a key date, whether that's to register or to request your mail-in ballot, and details on provisional ballots if you have missed a deadline. Next, we move to the ballot section, and this is really exciting. Never before has there been a comprehensive candidate and issue information resource that is truly accessible to the disability community. And that is what the Brink Voter Guide offers. Now, a user will be able to look up everyone who is running for office and research the initiatives on their local ballot. We provide completely nonpartisan information, including candidates' bio, endorsements, and their position on key issues. But the biggest and most exciting feature is the ability to save your candidate selections. So now you can take your own list of candidate choices to the polls and have exactly the information you need when you need it in an accessible format, even if your phone doesn't have service or Wi-Fi at that polling location. Next, we move on to the help section, which was our most popular feature in 2018 and is even more robust today. The first screenshot shows part of the voting rights script. Now this script outlines a number of issues a voter could face at the polls and more importantly, how to address those issues. This includes if the polls, poll workers don't know how to use or even set up the accessible voting machine, something that occurs all too frequently or what to do if you're faced with voter intimidation or someone questions your right to vote, which again, unfortunately, really does happen to members of the disability community. That moment can be very stressful. So we provide pre-drafted responses from voting rights lawyers that address a wide range of potential issues so that the voter knows exactly what to say to advocate for their rights. But if that isn't enough, the Brink Voter Guide goes above and beyond as each user has access to one touch dialing to access local advocacy organizations or board of elections to immediately deal with their polling station issue in real time. Whether that be the Secretary of State's office, the ACLU, or their state's chapter of the National Disability Rights Network. 
our voters are never advocating alone. And that's just one feature within the help section. We also have step-by-step -step instructions on how to vote by mail or how to vote in person. We provide tutorials on how to use accessible voting machines and answer a number of other frequently asked questions. The next piece I'd like to highlight is our feedback section. We are in a unique position to hear directly from voters at scale about the issues they face tied directly to specific polling locations. We've spoken with city officials and local boards of elections that are eager for this data so they can improve their election accessibility for everyone. In the long term, this might be our most impactful future. Other important aspects of the Brink Voter Guide that I want to make sure everyone is aware of is that it's available on both iOS and Android, another accessibility priority, is available in English and Spanish with the ability to add more languages, and the Brink Voter Guide is not just for this November election. We built this app to live on our user's phone and will alert them when their state and local elections are coming up. In 2021, there are citywide elections across the country, and our goal is to build a group of voters that are participating in every election, not just every four years. Now, I've talked a lot about accessibility thus far, but I wanna make sure that we highlight what makes this specific app so accessible and meeting the internet's highest accessibility standards. If you don't require accessibility features, you may not notice that the color and contrast ratios are optimized to account for low vision and color blindness. Sentences are clear and straightforward for greater comprehension. And those sentences are written in a font that is designed to improve readability. The buttons, navigation icons, and activation zones are large and easy to tap because not everyone uses the tip of their finger. And the one thing you can't see is, the is that the technology behind the screen that makes sure everything you do see is compatible with screen readers so everyone can navigate and use this product. Upon launch, the Brink Voter Guide will be the only fully accessible end-to-end -end application that spans the entire voting process. This doesn't just make, access, doesn't make democracy more accessible for people with disabilities, the Brink Voter Guide makes democracy more accessible for everyone. And with that, we'll end this section. Oh, but before I pass it over to Stephanie for the closing remark, I'd like to point out this one last thing. Through this entire process, we've been working with a number of data providers and technology service companies. Table XI for our core technology, Democracy Works for our key dates and polling locations, Ballot Ready for our candidate information, DonorBox, Donately, 8020, Webflow, and SurveyMonkey for our website. And through these constant conversations with them about their own tech, they have committed to make all of their products and services accessible. Because of course, we can't use any products that don't meet our own accessibility standards. So it's exciting to see they were already having an impact, making the whole ecosystem more accessible. And I can't wait for our official launch in September when we'll have an even greater impact on the electoral process. But in order to deliver this impact, we need to raise money tonight to execute all of these plans. So please donate if you can. One other thing, instead of doing an open question and answer period, we're providing a link where anyone can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me to discuss any questions, introductions, or others' ideas you might have to help drive our mission forward. Links to donate and connect with me are being added to the chat box now and will be in our follow-up emails. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you to our ASL interpreter, our captioner, and Dustin, our great video editor. And now I'm pleased to introduce Stephanie Berger for our closing remarks. Stephanie? Stephanie appears on screen. Thank you, Dylan, for your vision and your leadership. I know we all can agree that Tony Quello was amazing, and we thank him for his years of commitment to the disability community. And now on to you. We thank you for joining this evening. Please know how grateful we are for your time. I've had the honor of working with Dylan since 2018 on this issue and have been able to witness his passion and commitment to creating a more accessible election. I'm sure we are all feeling how critical this election is. I know I am. 
As Dylan mentioned, if the disability community had voted in 2016 at the same rate as the general public, there would have been an additional 2.2 million more votes cast. Think about the impact that would have made. Brink has the ability to change this. So I have one mission tonight, and that's to get you engaged in the work that we are doing. We have a goal to raise $100,000. And with your help, we can get this app into as many hands as possible before November. There are several ways that you can partner with us. First, for those of you who can, we would be honored and grateful if you would consider making a financial contribution towards Brink's efforts. As Dylan mentioned, please join us for our September kickoff. You will be getting all the details this week in our follow-up email. If there are others that you think would be inspired by Brink, please introduce us, engage them in that September kickoff event. Lastly, please download the app when it is available. Tell your friends, help us get the word out. Be our ambassadors. As I close, we want you to know how much we appreciate you and look forward to working with you and seeing you in the future. Please have a great night.